I'm Heather. I'm back with another really quick bug review. Um, I don't know how many minutes of kid free time I'm going to be able to have, so I have to make this really quick. Uh, I just finished The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons, and uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, it's not, you know, a literary triumph or anything, but, um, you know, for a certain mood, yeah, it hits the sweet spot. Um, I think there's a couple books in this series, a trilogy or something like that. This is the first one, um, and I could probably be tempted to read the other ones, really, uh, at some at a certain point. Um, not now, because I have some other things on my list that I want to read more, but I um, can definitely see myself getting tempted to read the other ones. So yeah, pretty good. So uh, I first heard of this book on a Facebook book group with a bunch of people that really like books. So I asked a question into the group. I was like, guys, I'm looking for a non-romance romance book. Like, I really like a strong romance side plot, but for books that are specifically romance books, I get a bit bored. Like, okay, yeah, they're in love, they're looking at each other, they're in love, they have sex, they're in love, they have sex. Like, you get over it really fast. So, I was looking for something where the main plot is something non-romance specific, but then in the background, a really strong romantic plot is going on. And then this woman got back to me and she was like, have you heard of Outlander? I was like, girl, yes! Oh, I've already gone in there and it was amazing. She was like, ugh, okay, that sort of ruins what I was going to do. I was going to recommend that to you. I was like, girl, I've been there. I've smashed that. It's over. And she was like, okay, fine. I have a new idea. How about The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons? And um, she said that this is also one of her favorite books and it's sort of same, same line really and that it's like a historical war setting and the main sort of plot is this sort of historic war going on. Um, but yes, yeah, strong romantic side plot with the sex, which is what I like to see. So it starts out um, on the first day that Russia is in World War II. So it's Tatiana, the main character, um, and Dasha. They're living with their family, their parents and everyone. Um, and they hear on the radio that the war has started. So um, her dad sends her out into the city looking for provisions. He sends her out with many, like, hey, get food, get all the stuff that we're going to need for the war. Um, and while she's out, she's really naive, she's really young, like as the book goes on, she gets older, she gets wiser, um, but at the very beginning, she's no idea what's going on in the world. Um, she runs into Alexander, this guy who is an army officer. Uh, he helps her to get what she needs, takes her to places that she wouldn't normally go in order to get everything she needs, and then takes her home. There's like a, a bit of a budding romance there, you know, they're interested, they're interested. Um, but when they get to Tatiana's house, Dash is there. And you find out that this person that Dasha has been going on about for ages, about how she's in love with him, it's Alexander. Even Alexander's a bit shocked. He's like, oh no, that girl who's coming on so hard, she's here. What do I do? Uh, so basically, that makes it so that the Tatiana and Alexander, they can never be together. It's not going to work out. Tatiana loves her sister Dasha. It will break her heart. So now they're on with this whole thing where... Alexander and Dasha are together and in love and Tatiana settles for um, Alexander's friend Dimitri who you can sort of tell from the very beginning is a bit of a bad egg. It's not gonna work out. So this sort of Dasha, Alexander, Tatiana, Dimitri situation plays out with the background of the war. The war is getting worse. People are starving. The food is becoming scarce. It's starting to get colder. People are dying. So first of all, the brother, Tatiana Dasha's brother, he dies first of all. He's gone off into war, whatever. Then, you know, then the dad goes, then the mother goes, then the cousin goes. Um, yeah, the grandmother comes for a bit, then she goes. It's all just a death fest. So then um, Tatiana decides, oh, it's really grim. I bet my brother's still alive in this place that we sent him off to that Alexander told us not to do. Um, I'm going to go and get him. So she goes on this long trek over all this stuff, whatever, goes there, finds that he's probably pretty much dead. Yeah, he's not there. Everyone who was there is dead. But now she's sort of stuck there. She needs to be saved. Ta-da! Steps in Alexander. Dasha goes to him. She's like, guess what Tatiana's done? And he's like, oh my god, I have to go save her! For you, of course, Dasha, because she's your sister. But I have to go and save Tatiana! So it goes across all this thing. And um, it goes, he saves her. And the two of them there in this, like, dangerous place have a bit of a romantic tryst. Bit of a, bit of a moment. Um, you find out at some point that Alexander's not actually Russian. He's American. And the reason that he's in Russia is because his parents were like these rich, um, like idealist communists uh, who decided to give everything up and move to Russia to sort of live out this idea that they have communism and this life that they want. So after he saves her, they're back in Leningrad. It's grim. Only Dasha and Tatiana are left. Everyone else has died. 
and they're getting sick and they're starving and they're living in a house that doesn't really have any windows because they were bombed out it's freezing cold so he's like i need to save them he comes up with a plan to like whisk them away to a safer place in the country um and then he sort of goes as far as he can go and then he has to leave them and then he goes back to leningrad he doesn't hear anything for months he's like are they okay like did they make it blah 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 um, he decides then just to go to the place that he was supposed to send them to, just to see if they're there. And he's worried the whole time. He's like, oh my God, they're probably dead, blah, blah, blah. He gets there and Tatiana is there. She's like, you know, full and healthy. You know, she looks amazing. Like she's going about her work. She has all these friends, blah, blah, blah. And he's just overjoyed. Then everyone comes up to him and they're clucking at him. They're like, oh, they know that he was Dasha's fiance, you know, and they know that Dasha has died. She died on the trip. So they're sort of clucking at him like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're so sorry that your girl has died. And he's just like, oh shit. How do I be overjoyed that Tatiana is okay, actually? Um, and also look a bit sad because Dasha is gone. Anyway, they get over it. <clears throat> so then Tatiana and Alexander are together. And uh, this is where all of the sex happens. And let me just say, it was very good. It goes on for quite too long, I think. Like... I like a bit of interspersed romance and sex, you know, like war, sex, romance, war, war, sex, romance, death, war, you know, like that. Not like war, 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 sex for just years, you know, and then war. But anyway, I'll take it as it comes. It was a very good time. Um, so then after which this sort of interlude of the sex, uh, they go back to Leningrad. First of all, Alexander goes because his leave period is up and they've got to go break the blockade. Um, but Tatiana follows him because she's like, I can't be so far away from him. What if he needs me? Anyway, he does end up needing her. He gets something blown up or whatever. He's very injured and she's the nurse and she helps him. She like uh, nurses him back to health. So then they have this sort of idea where they're going to escape the Soviet Union. Um, this is sort of one of the things that is weird about the book that um, they feel they need to go to America because... Alexander really is American and they're going to escape from Russia and go to America and live, blah, blah. Like, I'll leave it there. That's like a bit too much spoiler, I think, uh, to sort of say anymore. But um, basically, it sort of takes you to a point and then cuts it off because the next one, you know, is the sequel. It's sort of setting you up for... Um, you know, the next part of the story, not in this actual book. Okay, so some stuff that I liked about the book is that it is um, this kind of book that I tend to like, where it's true to the bill of what the lady said on the reading Facebook group, that it's sort of like Outlander in that it's mainly about the war and everything, but really strong, romantic, sexy side plot that is sort of interspersed. I really like that. Also, it was quite a quick read. So even though it's really thick, I like when I just sort of like pedal through a book really fast. Okay, some things that I didn't like about the book. Um, sort of loads of the characters are a bit flat. They're a bit 2D for me. Um, sort of everyone is their worst self, except Tatiana. So like loads of people don't appreciate her properly and they're really rude and really selfish. Um, Dash is really lazy. Um, the cousin keeps stealing all the food. Like they all are really in touch with their most horrible side, more so than their better side. Whereas Tatiana is sort of like angelic. She's like, you know, self-sacrificing. She loves everyone. She tries so hard to be her best self. Um, while everyone else is weirdly only their worst self. That was annoying. Um, also, different parts of the book sort of, I feel, go on too long. And they start to get really monotonous and boring. Like um, the part where everyone is dying in the war in Leningrad, you know, everyone's starving, everyone's freezing to death, their bodies on the road. That just went on and on and on and on for ages. Like, I know, I know that it's like trying to mimic what it was really like in the war, you know, to make you feel like, dear God, when will it end? But like, yeah, dear God, when will it end? It goes on too long. Also, the sex part in the country, you know, when they were like happy, they're in love, they're together, they're frolicking, they're having so much sex, and then it just keeps going on and on and on. like. I get it. You sort of like want the conflict and death to come back just so that that will stop. Um, the last thing I disliked about it is like kind of weird um, to explain. Like I didn't know the author or anything. I didn't know anything about her or where she's from or whatever. It turns out that she does live in America, but I think she is from Russia originally. And it was written, I think, in like 2000 or something. So, you know, relatively recently. 
When I was reading it, it sort of seemed like the author was like a 1980s American. Do you know what I mean? Like um, a sort of Cold War American who has grown up on like dinners of anti-Soviet propaganda for just decades. Do you know what I mean? So like everything is set up to where America is amazing and Russia is really bad and communism is really bad, you know, um, and it was sort of like 2D in this way. There was no sort of like capitulation to, oh, sometimes American stuff isn't good, you know, and sometimes things in Russia and communism can be okay, blah, blah, blah. It was just really like black and white, um, written by someone who like has no like thoughts about sort of gray area for these things. Um, it's hard to sort of explain, but um, yeah. Uh, and finally, some things that I thought were really interesting about the book, sort of when I'm reading a book and it comes, I come across things that I really want to Google and find out more about. Um, I really, really like that. One of them was this um, Operation Barbarossa or whatever, the sort of German invasion of Russia. Um, and I was reading about it and there's really weird stuff about how Hitler's plan was to like repopulate the whole of Russia with Germans and to turn all of like the Slavic people into slaves. Like how grim, like when you look back at like all of his plans for things that he wanted to do, it's like, you know, it's like Darth territory. It's really grim. Um, also another thing that I Googled was this sort of Pushkin link. So obviously the name of the book is The Bronze Horseman. And um, there's also um, a work by Pushkin called The Bronze Horseman, and the two are sort of linked, and that's why it's it's named that. Um, but I haven't really read anything like that. Um, I think I read some Pushkin in school, but I don't really remember. So I googled it. And um, it sort of parallels this tragic love story, so it's also a tragic love story. And um, it was sort of lifted up in Soviet times as sort of this ultimate Soviet communist ideal to where it's sort of an argument for why one would sacrifice the individual um, in order to make gains in the in the society as a whole. And um, Alexander and Tatiana have like a couple arguments about this where one is sort of pushing one idea and the other is pushing another idea. And I thought that was really interesting actually. Okay, I have to go. It is getting so hot in this little corner. Like I'm actually sweating. It's the first actually warm day of summer. Now I'm dying. <laughs> anyway. So just leave you with this, The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. It was pretty good. You know, like if you're in a mood for um, a bit of sex, a bit of romance, um, a quick read, not a sort of like a literary masterpiece, but something that, you know, um, a guilty pleasure type book, I would say, yeah, why not? Also, yeah, hit those other two that come after it. I, I might do, probably will do. I'll be tempted soon. Okay, bye. Until next time.